Live from Kent, this is The Late Late Show with Toby Payne Cook and Ed Finch. And you are listening live. Good evening, Vietnam! We're back! And we are live Kent. That's me. And hopefully, at this moment, whatever Ed. Um, anyway, good to be back on air. Hopefully we will have some listeners in a moment and a co-presenter. This is Teachers Talk Radio and you are listening live. Tune in live at ttradio.org or join in the conversation by downloading the Podbean app and following Teachers Talk Radio. Hashtag TT Radio. Hello, I haven't got an Ed. I haven't even got a Lucy. What's going on? Share your live stream to get more listeners. I am supposed to be sharing my live stream. I think I'm live on air. Um, I'm obviously speaking to the ether. My name is Toby Payne Cook, and I have a good friend who lives in Devon and works in Devon called Ed Finch, and he co-presents this show with me. We haven't done a show for the last four weeks, but today we are. Oh yes, here he is. Here he is. Good. It is working. Ed. It's just you and me. Is it just us? That's sweet, isn't it? We can talk about anything. There's no one, no one here. <laughs> no one here, but but, we, but, but 300,000 people might download it. So we have to be careful about what we talk about, oh, even though it's just us at the moment. Um, but it's working. Um, I was worried that, you know, having been so rusty with my, my massive... Wild, top... Sorry? How long has it been, Toby? Four weeks? It, this is... Oh, you've gone very quiet. Do I need to turn you up? Maybe I'll just turn you up. Well, no, well, maybe I'll just hold it closer to my mouth. Um, it's been five weeks. We've not done a show for the last four weeks. And we only did two shows before that. And then had a long break over Christmas. And slack. so, so um, yeah, we've not we've not been the most reliable of hosts, have we, Ed? Well, um, you know, but... maybe, that, maybe we're a treat, you know. Maybe, maybe you don't want us every week. Maybe you just want us every now and then. Uh, yeah, well, clearly you know, no one wants us today. I mean, no one likes. Maybe everyone's been drugged or something. Maybe there's maybe there's an apocalypse <laughs> happening, Ed, that we don't know about. What's going on? Maybe maybe they're only all on strike. they're all on strike. <laughs> they're not listening to the radio. That's it. Stick it to the man. Don't listen to the radio. <laughs> to the I man. Show the slack group, won't it? The... <laughs> 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 no, I think, but we, but, but, um, for the benefit of people who are going to listen back to this, um, yes, it was the first show we cancelled was because I had a school inspection, which seems you an did. eon ago. I think the report's You've coming out next history. week. Ancient history, yeah, yeah. and then we had a week off because it was it my was daughter Anna's birthday. birthday, or two days after it was her dad's birthday, if that makes sense, um, and then. You were in Bruges on holiday I was. in half term, and then we we thought we'd do one last time. week, and then you forgot you were at um you were at Lifter Lift Ed. I was at a do in London, friends. Yeah, I was at a do because I'm living the high life for me. Are you? Went Are to you? How London? So how have you been? I haven't spoken to you since since um. We saw yeah, each other in Devon on the Sunday, the last Sunday of half term. So what's that? Mm-hmm. That was uh, 10 days ago, 11 days ago, um, 10 days ago. So what, uh, what that seen seems seen longer than that, doesn't it? Time. Sorry? Yeah, no, it does. It seems like a long time ago. Do you know you are on holiday and you're in holiday land and then you go yeah. back to work? You're in work land. They're different lands. They don't really even connect. There's no. not even a narrow isthmus collection. You get to that thing, we go, oh, I've been on holiday. I'm totally disconnected from work. Totally recharged. You get back in there, I reckon half an hour, my shoulders have gone back up. <coughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, holiday seems like a long time ago. I've been back at work. I've been dealing with stuff, you know. You've I've been, been making stuff, stuff happen. I'm just looking making on Twitter yeah. to see. It says we are live just to see if, because we would normally have Lucy. I'm slightly concerned you think that we've Lucy got. Lucy is tired of us because that would be a terrible shame, wouldn't it? Oh, hey, <laughs> Mrs. Not... P. We've got Mrs. P, though. Mrs. P <laughs> is here. Mrs. P. Hi, Mrs. Like P. Her. 
Sex <laughs> you're the only it's just ed you and me at the moment and and that's that's a that's wonderful but i just want to do an um, hour's show for mrs p no problems how did mrs p know we were back on today because yeah, you're not you're not on the twits no. anymore no true so maybe she just occasionally logs in to Podbean to see if there's something going on. Ah, oh, yeah, because we haven't we haven't done a show for five weeks, Mrs. P. <laughs> um, and um, how is the sea, Mrs. P? And the morning eggs, Sunday morning eggs, are they going well? She's Wait, now not so responding. I... She's gone silent. We've insulted so anyway, her. So anyway. Anyway, this is this is more of a podcast than a radio show. So, Ed, we still need to produce content. Um, so what are we going to talk about? We've got lots. We've got a bit of catching up to do. Um, mm -hmm. I've got three things I want to touch upon through this show. Right. One of them is a little bit on numbers because our show did four we weeks ago. That? I feel like we did it. I mean, not that anybody's listening, so it doesn't really matter. But I thought I thought we did. I thought I remember talking about. Um, we spoke numbers. about words. We spoke about words and there was a thread. There was a thread on Twitter. There was a thread on Twitter. There were two threads on Twitter, which I've bookmarked a few things from. Um, James Hanscom got quite carried away on numbers and stuff. Um, and um, <laughs> Mrs. P has told us that I get alerted that the sea is cold and eggs are expensive. They are indeed expensive. They're a luxury these days. Um, and um, Lucy's in. Oh, thank the Lord if he is there, if he's <laughs> listening. Um, Lucy, we were very concerned that you weren't here. Normally you're in before Ed's in, but we, 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 I was concerned that I had some sort of, you know, different dimension because I knew you knew we were back on. So it's good to see you, Lucy, see your name anyway um, in the radio room. Um, so Ed and I were just talking about um, what we're going to talk about. So I think well, we've spent we, a little bit of time talking about numbers. Um, well, you can lead on that one. I'll lead on that one. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'd quite like to reflect briefly on my Twitter experience the last month, which has been completely swamped by Graham Andre and his brother. <laughs> brother like, don't look at your mentions. It'll just be wall to wall 70s pop. <laughs> it's just wall to wall <laughs> 70s and 80s pop. Um, um, Fed Music Challenge 23. For, for February, it'll do you no good. Yeah. <laughs> and... My timeline's changed a lot today, so I sent a tweet. I saw, saw tweets from from Tabitha and Mark Enser and Niche Wood and and um, I can't remember who else it was. Someone else. Oh, Alan. Alan Sui. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, Alan. Um, and um, I hadn't seen them on Twitter for, for weeks because I'd only seen um, Graham and his friends who um, and 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 yeah, and a, a few too many um, uh, take that songs for my liking. Um, but, but, you know, uh, but, but I did. I really enjoyed it. Lucy, Lucy really enjoyed Feb, Feb Music Challenge. Let's talk about Feb Music Challenge first. So okay. for those of you who are listening back to this or listening live, um, Feb Music Challenge is was new to me this February that has just gone. Oh. Today is the 1st of March. Are we supposed to say hares or something? Hares and rabbits on the 1st of March? White rabbits. Is that... Rabbits, hares. I don't know why we're supposed to do that, but I was always told you had to say that. The 1st of the month, no returns. That one, no returns, no returns indeed. Um, and so um, so we're out of the depths of winter, although I think we've got another cold spell coming, haven't we, pretty much this weekend? I think there might be a few flurries of snow about the place. On Monday, Tuesday, not not heavy downpour, that oh, downfalls, but need that. it's gonna be cold. Come on. I know, I know, it's gonna be a cold, cold start to March. I think. Um, anyway, but the February Music Challenge is a thing that I think Graham Andre has curated for um, several years, as far as I understand. Um, no, I don't know when the first one. What was it? Did it start in lockdown? I suspect it started in a lockdown. It's been um, at least several years. I think it might even predate lockdown. Really, gosh, you're tired, Ed. Are you okay? Oh, oh, oh well, I'll, you know, I'll sit up. <laughs> I'll keep the company. <laughs> um, you know, I I think it's been going. I I mean, I'd be. This is definitely at least the third year, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's longer than that. Graham is like Graham likes a project, keeps him busy. Yeah. And, uh, Yes, the February Music Challenge. I mean, he's been married. He has been married to to Spotify and Twitter. I mean, you know, he hasn't had any time for doing anything else at all, no. as far as I can tell. I mean, he's been out. Some days he's disappeared, and then he's come back and he's compiled his three hundred and fifty million song playlist. Um, 
I very dedicated. I listening to that playlist, can you? I love Graham. I really do. I used to do. You a show do. You, with he's him. a good friend of yours. You you did something. You did a project with him before you did this radio show with me, didn't you? Yeah, we used to do a uh, Sunday night uh, sing along show. I don't think anybody sang along much, but that was the idea of it. Was that uh, we'd have a bit of friendly banter, and we would yeah. try to banish the Sunday evening dread yeah. by. Um, Singing. We'd have a little, we'd have a little theme, you know. We'd say, "What do you want to th- th- for the theme for next week?" And people would say, "Oh, why don't you do songs about love?" And then we'd, I'd practice the chords, or pre- oh, I probably wouldn't practice the chords. Let's be honest, I'd probably not practice the chords for a couple of songs. And um, we'd have some banter and sing some songs. And they're all, it was all on Twitter, so you could just follow it as a video on Twitter. Through, I made it all in Streamyard, and it was. It was briefly yeah. popular that time. And that, that was a lockdown thing, wasn't it? That was a yeah, lockdown thing. Nothing else to do in the world. You couldn't go out. So what did you do? You watched me and Graham with terrible lag trying to sing together. <laughs> yeah, OK. People can go and see that still, I believe. If you go on Twitter and you search for the hashtag Ed and Gray's Sunday Night Sing Along, I reckon they're all still there. I think they they're are. still there. Yeah. I yeah. someone sent me some a work colleague, a work friend of mine, um, hadn't been on Twitter for for eons, and she yeah. she found a tweet. Do you remember when when we first went into lockdown in March twenty twenty? Um, uh, the Payne Cook family, as we were one yeah. one conjoined family back then, rather than two split families. Um, we we isolated the week before lockdown because Gemma had a nasty virus or something which which probably wasn't covid but you never know it may have been um but we we couldn't ever possibly know back then and um so we went into isolation a, a week early and um we bolted down to Amanda's aunt's place in in Wales um which was which we probably really shouldn't have done but we did because we knew it'd be quiet and lovely down there and it's better than being stuck in our house in 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 kent and so um uh but i'd been to the last brew ed before lockdown on on march the 14th 2020 which was in brew ed north london with with the lovely emma kell and adrian but I don't know how to pronounce his surname, Adrian Batune, but, but, but anyway, Bethune or, um, mm-hmm. um, and, and um, some other lovely people who I met there. And we saw the videos of the Italians singing on balconies. And then I did my Wurzels thing. And um, oh, no, I remember. I you remember that. I did my Wurzels thing from my bed, from Anna's bedroom, actually it was in, in Kent. And then we went down to Amanda's aunt Sue, who's yeah, got this amazing place overlooking this bay down in Wales, and I was doing this ridiculous chanson d'amour, sort of ridiculous leg kick thing, and this is dedicated to all the teachers, my teacher friends or something, and and I hadn't seen that since then, and 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 um, yeah, but someone just retweeted it or liked it um, very recently, and it's funny when that happens, isn't it? When when something that, that seems um, ancient in one's mind. Um, uh, it comes back and, and haunts you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Edgar, you and Graham, good mates. Um, but you but you have a view, and I don't want to criticise Graham because Graham's, I think the Fed Music Challenge is a wonderful, wonderful thing and he works so hard, um, but it does kind of swamp your timeline. And and um, and it, but it's, and it's quite, you know, it's fine. But I'm, I, I like to think of myself as having slightly awkward and discerning music taste um of course you uh, like to think that yes of course i like to think that because i'm an ass and um and, and 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 it was it was there was a few others like me on there but there was an awful lot of very pure pop and and you know stuff that's not cool at all um but lucy really embraced it and i owe lucy an on air apology because before February came along and Graham gave us a sort of music challenge each day with, you know, name a song that you associate with going night clubbing in the 80s or list a song that, that you know, or, or you know, that, 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 you know, your best dance floor um, and, you know, like romance, romantic dance floor, you know, erection section song. He didn't use that term, but you know what I mean. Um, and um, I probably can't say that on the radio, but I've just said it anyway. Um, and... And stuff like that. But before that, Graham was doing this thing. He'd started this thing, Twitter Music Club or Twitter Album Club. And we were talking, and you you 
shared two albums. Yours were um oh what was it called? The the the, the quite sparse yeah, Diamond mellow Mind. um Diamond Mind by uh, King Creosote with John Hopkins. I shared that yes. one and I uh, and Kate Bush's Hounds, Hounds of Love. Yeah. yeah. And and I got two in. I got I can't remember what I did. I did a Prince one because I don't know as much about Prince Sign of the Times and the primitives, a sort of jangly indie pop from from the late 80s and then lucy was the last person to go and she was the week before feb music challenge kicked off but lucy shared two very very unknown rare things that never quite got reviewed really by anyone except for um maybe one or two people so i, I apology lucy apologies lucy for never really quite doing that because i was then swamped by feb music challenge and 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 you went so obscure that um it, it sort of uh, it, it, then we went we completely flipped into this pop world of of abba and george michael and take that um anyway that's enough on the fed music challenge isn't it but thank you graham and thank you all those people who i've been liking and following and and reading their tweets about music the last month um but normal process can resume now <laughs> we're in march um yeah. yeah so fed music challenge is talked about the two other things are numbers I'm going to talk about in a bit. Um, the other thing um, that I've just got a bit involved in today on Twitter, which I thought might be quite teacher teacher talkish, to talk a little bit about um, lesson observations, because I know that Adam Bob has been putting some posts out about this and he's written a blog about it, which I have to confess I have not read his blog. But Adam writes a good blog um, and he um, has been tweeting about that and then Aidan Severs. Is Aidan Severs John Severs' brother? I don't believe so. No, I don't Not think so. Not related. Aidan Severs was, was and, and has wisely changed that, but he used to be at That Boy Can Teach, if you remember that. Okay. Aidan yeah. Severs is, a, is an education consultant now, described as, on, on, on his Twitter yeah, profile. We're all consultants, aren't we? I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we've, all um, that. we're all consultants now. But if yeah. you turn up at what we're doing day to day, most of us are still teaching. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so anyway, but Aidan said something. I think, I think it was sort of in response to probably some of a sub-tweety response to some of Adam's assertions about about um, it may or may not have been. I may have read more into that than I should do. Uh, but yeah, a little bit about lesson observations because I have actually had quite a few lesson observations recently i can't explain why well, some yet of them were that inspection i guess weren't they? well they two should... i had two during the inspection from the same Whoa. person and and then last year i had one at school as part of my appraisal process um which was nice and and then i may have had a couple of others in other locations but i'm not say I, I think you can work what out that might mean um but i'm not but but i'm not going to say any more uh, because let's not yeah. go any further down there however you've no. been observed more recently than i have i suspect yeah um and, and so it, and was it done well yes yeah, so let's do the observation thing well let's do the numbers yeah. stuff after the news let's talk about t teacher observations now so you see I, I yeah all my last few observations i've i've quite enjoyed you know it's it's a funny thing a lesson observation i mean we're not supposed to be graded anymore are we and, and we're not i wasn't i wasn't given a you know that was a good or that was an excellent or that was an outstanding or that was a one or a two or a whatever numbers correlate with those things um mm -hmm. i haven't had that but but you get feedback um i don't, didn't actually have feedback from my inspection observation so i i i um, my two observations during inspection one was a year six science lesson um and that was a very i thought they were going to come and see me in that lesson and so i planned a very um a very child-led hands-on practical lesson it was electricity that was the topic i was doing at the time i didn't pull anything special out of the bag but we were investigating um the uh correlation um the inverse correlation between resistance and current in in series circuits so just using different length wires and different thickness of wires between crocodile clips and and it was a very hands-on and, and the children were good um and i think um it wasn't too much of me talking and we got some and you know the amateurs are always a bit unpredictable with um, measuring current uh and but sitting right in front of the uh, where the observer was was sitting and and kind of watching the lesson, uh, 
was one particular boy who has um, is medicated for ADHD and is quite a long way down the ASD spectrum as well. Um, and I'm very fond of him and he loves his science, but he does tend to like to do it his own way and following instructions and building a circuit as instructed, um, you know, uh, you know, as drawn on the board um, is, is never really his forte. He's going to build his own own thing. And so I spent quite a large amount of time trying to get um, said child to um, to conform, really. And um, um, but he, he wasn't behaving badly. He was just being himself. And, and I think I kind of I kind of think I handled that quite well. But the rest of the class were, were excellent and, and, and very so that, that I enjoyed that. It went well. But then the same inspector, because I think we had three in. Um, the school who were going around loads of lessons at that time then I had the, the same inspector came back and saw me which I wasn't expecting because he was probably in my lesson for about 30 minutes um, and so he then came back and saw me again after break which I thought oh gosh does that mean I've done something awful or he just enjoyed it you never know really why they're coming back again um, and um, that was a very different lesson with 13 only 13 year seven girls and I was just sort of introducing um elements and the periodic table just just some very some fairly basic principles about you know how the periodic tables are organized and and where the metals are and where the non-metals are and and where the most reactive metals are and where the least reactive metals are and where the most reactive non-metals are and stuff and so I was kind of standing in front of my wall chart periodic table um that icon of science labs and um and sort of orating and explaining and it was very very to and fro very dialogic very question and answer and and quite a traditional but um back and forth kind of um discussion and and they were very curious the the, the girls and so that was that was a very different lesson but it was very teacher led um rather than child led so quite quite two quite different things um and so i i enjoyed them both but you know and he was quite smiley um and and that was that um other ones, you know, I think you can. I have experienced a person at the back with a clipboard and scribbling loads, and you know, you you know, they they may as well not be in the room, really. You know, they may as well just video it. Um, that I don't like that. I like it when they sort of, you know, when you can sort of interact with the observer. What do you think? Yeah. Do you like to interact with your observers? Yeah, I do. I think it's really weird if you don't. I think that it's uh, a strange vibe in the room if we all try to pretend this person isn't there. So I'll greet them. Yeah, I'll greet. I'll warmly welcome i'll add them into the questioning i'll have a little bit of banter with them and some of them like it and some of them let me tell you do not absolutely and, you know, yeah i have a reputation i don't know how well deserved for being occasionally you'll be surprised to hear this toby but some people think occasionally i can be flippant um, <laughs> I, I don't know where no no from. never you know you wouldn't believe it but it, it has been suggested and so i you know sometimes i think oh well i don't know there's a guys come into the room. The children are a little bit like, mm, who's this guy with a clipboard? Why is he looking at me? I think if I acknowledge it and show that I'm comfortable with it by yeah. using a little bit of humour, I think I detoxify the situation. If people then have a problem with it, I think my opinion is that they can jog on. Yes, I agree. So I totally agree that that's it's it's a weird thing when it's completely passive. It, it it needs to be an act. I, I think so. And acknowledging them, why they're there. I'm looking at Adam's blog. Adam is uh, is a great blogger. I like him a lot. I had a I've never you met, met him, him in face in real life, but uh, I had a chat with him a couple of weeks ago on the on um, Teams about that carousel program that um, okay. he's working on. Yeah. Anyway, lovely guy, and it was, so it's really nice to actually have a chat with him because I think he's he doesn't always put himself over on Twitter. Oh, none of us do. It's a persona, isn't it? You know, your 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 Twitter output is the kind yeah. of you that you like people to see, or the kind of person that you need to express because you're not doing it somewhere else. Whatever it is, but I think sometimes he comes across as sort of sarcastic and severe, and he isn't he's sarcastic, he's severe, and and he's growing out of this now. And this, this is, you know, I'm sorry, Adam, if you listen to this, you know, quite earnest as we tend to be in our in our twenties. But I think. Um, but he he he's definitely intellectual. He's definitely wise and and asks all the right yeah, questions. Anyway, listen, uh, this great blog he's written, which I've got in front of me, he sort of he's trying to put together a better way of, of 
observing. He says, teachers have not generally had training on how to observe lessons. I think that's very true. I think they have mm -hmm. not. They go, oh, yes, you know, now you've got to this point in your career where you're a year ahead or leading a subject. You need to do desk observations, but you're not going to go and do a, even a half day course on how to make sense of that. So they'll look out for things like, are the students busy or is there good? Is there lots of work in the books or all those things that we know are poor proxies for learning? Yeah. They'll, they'll tend to magnify straight to them and then they'll give feedback and they say there wasn't you know the children by the end of the lesson hadn't put enough into their books next time i observe i'd like to see that there's more in their books so people set off down these rabbit holes of yeah. of uh of things otherwise and this is this is the because we haven't taught people how to do it so he sort of through the blog tried to put together a, a methodology that works and so i'm, I'm saying it at this point because he goes by the end of his blog he's got to a five point plan Number one, know what you're looking for. So when we go into an observation, we're looking for a particular thing. It might be something we discussed with the teacher earlier or something that was a point of progress from the previous observation or whatever. But go in looking for something, not looking for everything, because you can't see everything. To get into the lessons, well, I think that was obvious, but actually, in a sense, get into the lessons get is get involved. It yes, means, don't just sit at the back like we've just spoken about. Yeah, absolutely. I these children really understand this thing. Okay, well, I'm going to ask a couple and I'm going to do a couple of contra examples and see if that they can spot those and things. You know, three, hypothesize. You know, so I, I think what's going on is this. That's much more interesting than just sitting saying, I will watch this and then I'll go away and whatever. I'm mm. in the lesson. I'm thinking, I think I know what's going on here. I'm going to check it. Four, test your hypothesis. And five, in bold ladies and gentlemen he's allowing himself the luxury of bold type with an exclamation point at the end <laughs> point five is have fun yeah have fun you're going in you're getting to be in with one of your colleagues and a whole bunch of kids hopefully learning them and watching them learning something pretty cool have fun i don't you think that's great he says, well, that's I'll that's very much how I felt in 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 a very recent observation, um, in in perhaps a different setting, um, and and I felt it felt really good actually, um, yeah. And, and yeah, absolutely. So I think that's his last paragraph. He says one final postscript is that this method of observation is energetic and dynamic. You're constantly switching your attention from the teacher to the student, constantly going to them, talking to them about what they know, what they've understood. I flip in love it, and it sure beats the way I used to observe, which was glued to a seat in the back corner of the room, filling out some pro forma. Yeah, so there you go. The I mean, I checklists, I think. I think that's the problem with checklists full stop. I remember when I was at worked at Zeneca Agrochemicals and we had safety inspections. They were really good, you know, lab safety inspections. They were really good because they reacted to, they responded to the the setup of the lab. It, there was no sort of going around and just checking a list of boxes because if you go do a check a list of boxes, you'll you'll find whether those boxes are ticked or not ticked, but you might miss something else that is 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 really dangerous in a safety inspection or or really you know not really unusual but is really dangerous or hazardous sorry i should use the word hazardous not dangerous but but for and, and same with a lesson observation if you're just looking to see that there's a learning objective or a set of success criteria or the children have underlined the date or or the children have written a lot in their books or the children haven't been off task at any point in the lesson or if you're just looking at those standard sort of box ticks um you might miss the fact that that one child has, you know, potentially punched another one in the face, or mm -hmm. the teacher has has actually created a eureka moment for one or two children in in the corner of the classroom that 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 was completely unexpected. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's wise. That that's good. I agree with Adam wholeheartedly on that. Um, what do you see? I mean, I think the, the the conversation I was having with with Aidan Severs was was. Um, you know, in secondary schools, um, in senior schools and secondary schools, of course, um, you can have a member of SLT doing the, you know, official sort of appraisal style um, observations or, or, you know, just just monitoring. Um, and they might be an English teacher watching a science lesson or a, or a math teacher watching an art lesson or, a, you know, and 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 that's. Um, that's not probably very useful because the way you might want to teach art effectively or science effectively or maths effectively or English effectively are very, very different. Um, but I do think that we can still learn 
from each other as 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 adam suggested you know if you if you know what you're looking for if you're just looking for that the children are all participating rather than it's just being led with led by you know three or four children um or and 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 also whether there's a lot of thinking going on rather than just doing you know so so children aren't just coloring in something they're actually having to think about why they're coloring in something or uh, or discuss it or 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 and and then the Memory. Sorry, memory is the residue of thought. Ah, oh, not coloring. Memory no. is not the residue of coloring. That's disappointing. I had World Book Day today at my school. World Book Day. So we're doing tomorrow. Day. We're doing tomorrow. Well, tomorrow my entire school is on strike, and we won't be there. So we oh, did it today. Point. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good, good point. Well made. made. Anyway. Did they think? I don't know, but they did some very good drawings of uh, of the main character from the new uh, the new Reeves and uh, McIntyre book. I think that's that's is that good is that a good proxy for learning? Getting to draw a mouse while I read you a story. <laughs> no. Is that just um... Afternoons in primary education. What happened this afternoon? Mister Finch read us a whole book while we drew mice. Yeah. <laughs> Was it fun? <laughs> Yeah, it was. Did you draw a good mice? Yes, the mice were excellent. That's all right then. That's good school, isn't it? Yeah. I don't, I'm glad I wasn't observed on it, to be honest with you. But it was. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, just to, just to break off from our conversation, um, Lucy has told us in the chat that right. she got a goodbye kiss on the cheek as she went off. Oh, hang on, no, no, that's no, no. Hang on, that that's that's the follow up comment. Um, wait a minute. I was kissed by an observer once, and then Paul Fox. Hello, Paul. Ha ha, Lucy. And um, and I hope it was wanted. And then then Mrs. P, distracted by wanting to know why Lucy was kissed by an inspector or observer, and um, and then Lucy explains it all. She'd been head teacher for my gremlin spawn. I love Lucy's the way she speaks about her gremlin. Her. her <laughs> a child, a gremlin spawn, that ended up wa watching me teach. My class all thought she was my mum at that point. Lovely person about my age. OK, um, and Mrs P's laughing and I got a goodbye kiss on the cheek as she went off to see year four. So there we are. Um, OK. Um, anyway, listen, uh, Mrs P, go right back in conversation. Mrs P said that we, we sang along in the privacy of our own homes back in the days of Ed and Gray's Sunday night yeah. sing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I retweeted a couple of them to see if they get any traction, but I think it was a time and a place. There was a time when you used to sit in your home, wait for Ed and Graham to come on and sing you a song so you could sing along. Maybe not so much now. Anyway, carry on. So, okay, observing. So we'll just finish this in, in the next couple of minutes, talk about observations. I'm going to do the news and then we'll do um, do some stuff on numbers and whatever else comes to mind. Um, and some music, hopefully, Ed, as well. Um oh. I need somebody put some suggestions in the chat of things I could sing. You were hoping for songs in some way related to numbers, weren't you? I suggested uh, songs related to numbers, and I think I've suggested it's probably quite difficult to do. I suggested yeah. the magic oh, wow. number, whatever the three is the magic number by Della Soul. Um, no, no, number of the Beast by Iron Maiden, which I can't yeah, think what that sounds like. No, um, nor can I. <laughs> nor can I. I don't want to think what it sounds like. Song, is it? I don't think it's a ukulele song, no, because it's probably sort of, um, I don't know, you, you could make it work, I reckon, Ed. You can make anything work I on the ukulele. Most work if I try. I'll go. Okay, have, you seen, have you seen, on the subject of ukulele, um, have you seen that, that when I'm trying to, my constant quest to try and persuade you to come to WOMAD with myself and my friend Shades, who are going to WOMAD, that there's a band playing at WOMAD called Ukulele, ukulele Death Orchestra, which are um, definitely going to be a must-see. Um, right. Yeah. Or, or might be rubbish. I'll then, tell you then, what, I, I mean, I, it might be that I'm really out of touch, but it did seem to me that uh, the lineup has suffered post Brexit. Oh, I, Brexit has killed killed WOMAD to some extent. It's really hard for a lot of the international acts to get visas. It's really, really, really hard. Um, so where's you uh, two and do it? Where's Papa Wemba? Where's Salif Keita? Where's, you know, any... You just well, they've got Femi Kuti. Femi Kuti, fella's, fella's son, no, um, is there. I, I, I would cross the earth to go and see Fella Kuti. I can't, he's dead. He's no longer with us. Mm. Mm. Do I no, need to? Okay, I like Horace Andy a bit of bit of bit of um Jamaican reggae dub. Is he still with 
Andy's Andy still with us? He must be getting on. Horace Andy's he? still with us. He's quite quite ancient, but he's he's playing. Um, Bombay Bicycle Club are a sort of are yeah, they in? They're, they're 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 not very international. Um, who else we got? Kate Rusby. Um, <laughs> that great world music act. Kate Rusby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, they, it's varied. It's not all. It's 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Your your point is you went in the glory days, Ed. I'm 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 just a just a, a what's it a late adopter. Um, anyway, anyway no, it'll still still be camping with friends. Some having a nice some time. Drinks, some laughs. And you yeah. never know, you might stumble across something. That's the thing about WOMAD or any really good music festival is, you you know, you, you might be foolish enough to buy a ticket on the strength of the headliners, but your weekend will be made by something mad you come across that you weren't expecting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Lucy's number song suggestions. Tom Robinson, two, four, six, eight, motorway. Motorway. When I watch the Six Nations and on ITV, it's always sponsored by... Something motorway it always makes me laugh. Anyway, um, I've still got one more thing to say, haven't I, about observations? Have you got anything else to say yeah, about observations, Ed? No, um, I, I, I think it's just it, that I, I cover it by reading um, Adam's blog. Great. Well, well done. You have. You've done. You've done. You've done a better service to the conversation than I have. Where is it? I'm looking on my tweety tweety bits. Hang on, finding my comment. That I, I think that. If you're not a subject specialist, or indeed in primary, where, of course, subject specialism's, you know, not particularly a thing. Um, where, oh, where, oh, where is this blessed thing? Here we are. Aidan Severs. Okay, 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 okay. I can find it in my thread now. I've suggested that I think any experienced teacher... Um, of any subject background, if the objective of the observation is um, the two key questions. I said, what is the thinking to doing ratio? So, you know, um, obviously, if it's a drama lesson or a P lesson, then maybe that's not quite right. Because, you know, but if it's a, if it's a if it's an academic subject, you know, in English, maths, um, science, history, whatever, you know, what is the thinking about the task, about the the lesson objective, whatever to the doing doing of of you know is it has it just been converted into some sort of engaging activity which has got really very little to what you actually want the children to be thinking about. So what is the thinking to doing ratio, and is everyone participating most of the time? So so it's not you know if if you're doing paired work is is one part of the pair dominating or if you're having a classroom discussion whether it's with or without mini whiteboards or not you know are, are is everyone really really focused on what it is you're trying to do um, and and I think those two questions can be asked by by anybody and um and and those you know we can't but we can't measure learning I don't think anyway so I also wrote in the same tweet actually um Aidan's original tweet was, if it is true that it's difficult for a lesson observer to see learning happening in a lesson they visit, then is it also true that it's very difficult for the teacher of that lesson to see learning happening? What is it that enables the teacher to assess, but not the observer? So I said, good point. I don't think any of us can categorically observe learning. Learning is a gradual, complex and largely invisible process. For me, the two key T questions are, what is the thinking to doing ratio? And is everyone participating most of the time, um, if not quite all the time? Because um, that's that's a big ask, frankly, for everyone to be participating in every single minute of every single lesson, all day, every day. Um, that's unrealistic, I think. Work. Sorry? It's not how humans work. No, exactly. That's what I would say. That should, I'll get that on a T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Anyway, what is learning? It is not a thing. It's an abstract noun, and it describes, like, a process we didn't neither know nor understand. Of course, you can't observe it. No. No, it's, and Mrs. Pease just said, can you measure the thinking? No. No, you can't measure the thinking. I think I think that's true. Thinking is also abstract. You put all uh, of the children into MRI tubes, couldn't you? Or, like... Some sort of imaging thing. Put them all like multi electro We can say, oh, look at all these areas of the brain lighting up. But, you know, yeah. you go, oh, they all lit up at once. That proves that the teacher had provoked a moment of great breakthrough and understanding. And then you'd look through the video on Iris Connect. It would turn that was when a squirrel went past the window. I mean, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have the technology. And no. if we pretend we do, we are lying to ourselves. Let's Absolutely. not. Absolutely. 
Let's no, absolutely. And I think in this in this last medium we have you and me talking on pretend radio. Let us at least be honest in that context. In SLT, I'll pretend that we can measure learning, all right? But here, let's agree it's a nonsense. It is a nonsense. It's a nonsense. I absolutely agree. And and it's learning mostly probably happens in our sleep, in our in our subconscious, and it probably happens very gradually over a number of years. You know, our learning of concepts in in you know it doesn't it doesn't happen in that one lesson. So I, I I that's what my overall my final comment on this is that I think. I think it is important to monitor and observe teachers in action because it's what we do, but it's become too big of a thing. I don't think, you know, it's become too well, big of a it's thing. It's less of a thing than it was, isn't it? It's less of a thing than it was, um, but also the idea that you can compress, the idea one that you can measure learning or measure thinking is a bit of a flaw, but the other thing is the idea that you can compress learning into a neat 50 minute chunk or, or whatever your lesson length is is also a bit weird you know that the, the, you know in reality our lessons are continuums aren't they you know our, our, our subjects and our and our, our sequence of lessons and and you know not just through through that topic or through that term or through that week but but actually over the years as we're studying that stuff and getting deeper as as we go on so I think um you know, we we as teachers overanalyze, overthink this stuff, and um, but I I do think we can walk into a classroom and and make some general observations about whether there's a positive rapport between the children and the teacher, whether there's whether there's you know it, it's got a positive energy about it, and that can be a silent energy; it doesn't have to be a noisy energy. Um, we can we can make some observations and assessments about that, but we can't we can't really say whether it was good or bad or or you know particularly I mean, anyway that's 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 my view so i think we're more or less agreed on that aren't we well i also we're halfway through the show but there is only 90 minutes the show. left yes there's only 90 minutes and most of that's going to be someone telling us how to use control c and control v no so... no no there's no tech update today and sure it's quite a short we've got five minutes of news sorry if people are going to miss it i good to tech update Maybe we'll do that, come back after the news, and I'll give a tech update. Okay, Ed, we've got Ed's tech update coming in just over five minutes. But for now, news and a little advert. Um, back soon, people. Bye. This show is brought to you in partnership with John Cat Educational, a leading publisher of books, directories, educational guides, and magazines specifically aimed at forward-thinking schools in the UK and beyond. Have you checked out their latest releases? Don't miss out. Visit johncatbookshop.com to explore their full range of titles and advance your own professional development today. Happy reading. This is Teachers Talk Radio. And this is Teachers Talk Radio News. The iNews website covers the issue of vaping in schools. Whilst vaping is thought to have helped many adults kick their unhealthy smoking habits, the rise in straight to vaping in young people and children rings alarm bells for many. The report focuses on concerns expressed by teachers about angsty pupils struggling with the wait for their next fix. Vapors making school toilets frightening places as they gather in groups, increases in internal truancy, and worries it may lead to pupils experimenting with stronger substances. Some schools have made significant changes to toilets to include sophisticated sensors which set off an alarm when e-cigarettes are used, whilst others have increased numbers of staff on duty in corridors to deter pupils from skipping lessons in order to vape. Many schools have also invited police and health specialists in to talk about vaping in a bid to educate pupils on the dangers. Many schools across the UK now ban vapes, treating them like other banned items such as drugs and knives. This is prompting suspensions and other high-level sanctions in a bid to remove them from schools. England's Chief Medical Officer, Professor Sir Chris Whitty, said last week that the number of children vaping was appalling and heavily criticised companies which produced them in flavours such as green gummy bear and watermelon bubblegum. The bright colours, shapes reminiscent of highlighter pens, and the low cost of around £5, making them attractive to youngsters with pocket money to spare, which Whitty described as utterly unacceptable. The proportion of 11 to 17-year-olds who say they have tried vaping rose from 14% to 16% in 2022, according to a YouGov survey, 
with a percentage of children who regularly vape doubling in the same time period. The article also features references to Teachers Talk Radio's Tom Rogers tweet asking how much of a problem vaping was for schools, with many replies indicating it is a serious cause for concern. Full details of the article are available online. In related news, many media outlets have been reporting on so-called school protests, which seem to be focused on toilets and the right to use them as a key issue. According to multiple stories, pupils have been encouraged to protest about rules focused on restricting free access to toilets by posts on social media platforms such as TikTok. The majority of the schools affected make it clear that rules around access to toilets are made for safeguarding purposes, designed to protect all pupils and to minimise bullying, vaping and other antisocial behaviours. The Evening Standard reports that a quarter of UK student gamblers may be experiencing harm whilst half said betting had affected their university experience. The survey of over 2,000 students at UK universities was conducted in December. It found that 71% of the respondents had gambled in the last 12 months, with 24% exhibiting problem gambling behaviour. Of the students who said gambling had had an impact on their experiences at university, 13% said they'd had trouble paying for food, 10% had missed lectures, and 9% struggled to pay bills. A third of student gamblers said they spent between 11 to 20 pounds per week, with 13% admitting to a spend of between 50 and 100 pounds per week. Only 55% of those surveyed were aware that support for them was available through their universities. Full details of the report are due at the end of February. Aberdeen Live reports on a project led by the University of Aberdeen, which has led to a successful trial of a new approach to teaching which is helping improve adult literacy in Rwanda. The project adapted the existing adult educational curriculum to better develop relevant knowledge and skills which can be applied in students' daily lives. These techniques included role play, group activities, case studies and problem solving. Previously, only 14% of those pursuing an adult learning course felt they had gained the skills they needed, with 66% still unable to read and 76% unable to write by the end of the course. The new method showed improvements in multiple areas, with adults retaining their knowledge and skills, which were linked to nutrition and hygiene, improved household income, animal husbandry and becoming community leaders. The project was funded by the Scottish Government. This has been your Teachers Talk Radio News with Joe Fox. Is that it? We're back in the room, Ed. Hello, Ed. He's on no, mute, no, I'm everybody. On mute. No, I'm not on mute. No, 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 I'm not. I was uh, taken oh. aback by the abruptness of the end of that, as I believe you were too. There was no jingle hey, or anything. John advertising now, John Cat. Hi, John, John Cat. John Cat, pay us our, our significant Teachers oh, Talk Radio salary, Ed. Yeah. Um, the, the, you I'm know, on, you will have noticed Ed on, went to one. Bruges in half term, everybody. He couldn't afford to do that before he became a Teachers Talk Radio host. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's absolutely true, yes. And making yeah. millions of this. We are. Making millions. Yeah. Absolute millions in, 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 in old, um, in Lira. Millions of Lira. Maybe, in all fairness... The, uh, the, the they did pay for our curry at the credits and tandoori, didn't they? Yeah, that was a mistake though. We, it was, it, we, we should have used that money for a curry at um at at some other any other curry house. I think we, you know we, the, we the, the, yeah. There's a place up the road that does a much better curry, but here's the issue. Here is the issue. It only does carry out. You can't eat in. Oh yeah, but we needed to eat it on New Year's Eve. That was a good night, wasn't it? A terrible curry in the restaurant or a good one at yeah. home. I'm I'm feeling that I, I I'm I'm feeling just rem just remembering that evening now, just you mentioning it, <laughs> except for the curry. It was it was really good. I think I think I think a credit and pub crawl every New Year's Eve is is on yeah, the cards, frankly. Can I tell you what I um why well, though? Because I was meant to do a tech update. I was wondering whether we should talk about our favourite vapes. Because vapes are great. And I... <laughs> Our favourite vapes. Well, I've got three three children who are um are victims of the vaping, the teenage really? vaping craze. Ollie's not a teenager anymore; he's twenty. He's he's you know the problem with the the, the teenage vaping thing is. Obviously, it's it's the new smoking, right? So it's, it was cool when you were fifteen to to smoke a fag 
behind the bike sheds. And and now it's cool to smoke, a, to vape a vape behind the bike sheds or equivalent thereof. Um, it is, it, it is, and it's weird. Um, but, but of course, you could choose to vape a 0% nicotine vape. But no, it's not cool to have, vape. The thing is, I can't speak about it because I've never vaped. But but, but I think it's, it's cool. Did, it would be pretty cool. So. It's it's cool to get addicted to nicotine. It seems that's the weird thing. So so Ollie is addicted to nicotine, age twenty. Oh well, he was addicted to nicotine aged eighteen, probably. Um, yeah. And so you know, um, it, it's but I, you know that's 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 humanity we we need to find a vice and Did and you, you know a smoker? You a smoker, Toby? I don't no know but my smoker. dad my dad died from cancer a, when i was yeah. 16 and he'd been well, he'd smoked off. 40 a day for about 30 years he gave up when i was born he but he smoked a lot in his in his 20s 30s and 40s was, was it a lung cancer i'm sorry if this is no it wasn't lung it was cancer. cancer it wasn't lung cancer it was colon cancer which then reached the yeah. liver before it was found so so it was the liver in the end that, that got him yeah. Um, yeah. and, um, his was, but, but he also had a very high fat and red, a lot of red meat, um, and, and just, you know, a classic, um, and he drank a lot and, and, you know, who knows what genetic factors were involved as well, but, um, there we go. Well, I, mean, I mean, as you know, my family is, uh, is affected by cancer in every possible branch, but I smoked mm. like a chimney from my, what would I say, from my late teens through to the sort of more oh, nearly the end of my 20s yeah, yeah i would say the smoking decade if i could have the money back from that decade i could buy lots of vapes um yeah <laughs> you could you could buy a vape shop i could i, know I could set myself up as crediton's leading vape purveyor i'd be made for life wouldn't i for life. ed finch purveyor of vapes um yes Ooh. with the bookery next door um yeah yeah okay are you gonna play us a song now you sound like you want to well i don't know if i want to but i was just i mean this was why i was surprised i was in the middle of working this one out and uh and then suddenly the lady stopped talking and we didn't get to learn what control c and control v do so are you gonna are you gonna join in, you gonna join well, in? I, I need to know what it is i might drive midway to the motorway station okay on the left hand side Headlights shining, dropping rain on the window frame Little young lady start us hitching a ride Come on for the chorus, here we go! And it's two, four, oh, six, six, eight, eight. Eight. And never too late Me and my radio trucking on through the night, the night. Three, Three, five, five seven, five. nine on a double white line Always sun coming up, coming up with the morning light. light. Now, does anybody know the second verse? Because we all know the first verse and chorus, don't we? But do we know the second verse? I didn't. Always get sitting pretty on your two wheel stallion. That's a nice phrase, isn't it? Yeah. It's all gentle, lorry got a beat on you. Nice. Ain't no use setting up with a bad companion. Ain't nobody got the better of you know who. Yeah, a bit weak at the end. It's two, four, four six, six, eight, 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 never too late. Me and my, my radio trucking on through the night. Three, five, five seven, nine, nine on a double white line. Motorway sun coming up with the morning, morning light. light. Be with the last verse, do you think? Yeah, go on. Should we do the last verse? Come on, then. Well, there uh, ain't no route you can choose to lose the two of us. Ain't nobody know when you're acting right or wrong No one knows if a roadway's leading nowhere Gonna keep on driving on the road that I am on Chorus last time! Chorus! And it's two, four, eight, 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 never too late Just me and my radio trucking through the night Three, five, seven, nine on a double white line Always sun coming, coming up with the morning light. light. Two, four, six, eight. Light. Morning light, light. Okay. Good suggestion, Lucy. Shame we haven't spent any of the show talking about. <laughs> What's your favourite number, Toby? 
<laughs> my favourite number, I don't have a favourite number. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but if I did have to come up with an answer to that question in order to satisfy a curious four-year-old, um, yes. <laughs> I, would, I would say seven because it's yeah. such an awkward bloody number. Um, it's a prime it's number. I always prime, like a, it really feels like a prime, isn't it? I like a I, prime. I like a prime, and it's got all that. Uh, well, not that I'm a religious man, but it's got all that biblical significance as well, seven hasn't it? Seeds of rye, seven tears of running to the ocean, seven days uh, of the week. It's the only, of course, ooh. the week is is it, seven has created the week, and and you know the word the, the word the Sabbath. The week has seven. You know, no, the week I, has created I, I seven. Sorry, so what? No, hang on a minute. The mystique what I mean is... of seven, surely. The mystique of seven, surely, is linked. I'm just going to say this and see if anybody shoots me down. The reason we have this great respect for the number seven is because we've got seven days in a week. That must be arbitrary, mustn't it? Is it just so that you can have four of them in a notional month? Is that the no, point so of what, it? what happened? No, the, the, the seven comes from the Sabbath, comes from the creation story, doesn't it? It comes from, you know, I God created the earth. It might have come from before that. I don't Does think it? That. No. Do you, think there were seven, do you think there's seven days because of the creation story or that there were seven days and the creation story was sort of backfilled to fit? No, I'm sure the did the working the concept of the working week, the concept of the Sabbath, the concept of, of that did that exist before the Bible? Or um, before the the, 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 the 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 what's the Jewish equivalent of the Bible called? Can't remember. Well with the Talmud or the Pentateuch, which are you going for? Um I don't know. I'm I not up on this I stuff. Mean, no, listen, I don't I don't know, but I just feel that it's okay, it's it's a weird number is what it is. Well it, it is a weird, but, but also the week is what I don't like about the week as a concept is it is a human construct, whereas a month relates mm -hmm. to the moon's oh, yeah, no, roughly, exactly. the and, and a year relates to... A year is a thing, a month A year is, is a thing. thing, a day is a thing, and a, a, a month is more or less a thing, uh, whereas a, a week is an utterly abstract human construct um, that... And, and, and that's why I'm very pro a four-day week, um, but we're so bloody locked into this five-day week and this two-day weekend and, and oh... Mm -hmm. It's 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 so outmoded in the modern world. It's utterly unnecessary, um, but it does make organising society easy. It does make organising society easy. Admittedly, I understand and also that. Also, bin days. I mean, bin days are all oh, bin days. really <laughs> confusing, aren't they? You get rid of the seven day week. I'm never going to know when to put the bins out. So I think we need to keep it for that. Yeah. No. No. You, you put it, putting out on the um on the third day of the waxing crescent. Um, yeah. Or something, you know that oh, well, that wouldn't work because it's cloudy. It's not going to um, happen. It's not going to happen, Toby. And anyway, and you wanted to talk about some. You got like a minute now, Babylon. <laughs> no, <laughs> I want to talk about yeah. So, so to, in terms of numbers, yeah, I think I, or something. I once had a conversation about yeah. with with a previous um, maths teaching colleague and how yeah. how. Um, you know, we, we've we're very conditioned into our decimal number system, our base base ten, and and but yet there's all sorts of quirks when you come to you know twelve hours in in on on the on the annual clock and um you know twenty four hours in a day, but but two lots of twelve um and and you know on on the analog clock with 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 twelve numbers on it, and then you've got circles um that have three hundred and sixty degrees, and you have minutes that have 60 seconds and hours that have 60 minutes and all these 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 numbers in time and measurement of time come from as far as i'm and and you know circles and and degrees in circles and and then the the, the units of time are kind of linked to that sort of thing in 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 that 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 60 base 60 and and that, I believe, from my understanding, my limited understanding, comes from the Babylonians. So they had a sort of base 60 stroke, you know, to some extent, a base 60 kind of system. So so um, and but the Babylonian number system fell down because they didn't have a good um, reading for, for they didn't have a value for zero. So it wasn't until we had, you know, and Roman numerals didn't have a value for zero or, or no value for zero or figure for zero. So so that's why the Arabic system won over, isn't it, with when they invented zero um, as a as a sort of a placeholder if you like in between one and a negative one um and um anyway but i think there's a very strong argument it's obviously not going to yeah. change now 
for having a base 12 system, number system, rather than a base 10 number system. And I said, but that'd be complicated to this, this mathematician. I said, but then he said, no, 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 you, you, 12 would become visually 10. So you're, you're not your one and your naught placeholder for, for your yeah. tens vis, visually would be 12. So you just need two other single digits. So you go one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Blair, Blair. Blair, yeah. Blair, which have got which have got symbols and single digits, and then twelve instead of it looking like one and two looks like one like and 10. and naught, and, and, and zero, because yeah. then if if twelve is your base system, you can halve yeah. it, at, which you can t halve ten, but you can also yes, quarter it and third it, which you can't do wholly with yeah. ten, and you can um you know so, so twelve is divisible by by six and by four and by three and by two and by one, whereas 10 is only divisible by five, two and one. So so it, it gives you a whole load more options in terms of quartering and thirding and halving and and, and all that thing and sick thing. Um, and and it links 12 links much better to 60 um, in, in in seconds and minutes and, and hours and so forth. Um, Absolutely. And it also links better to 360 degrees in the in the circle as well. So so the Babylonian yeah. system would have been better. So I think we were a bit short sighted to stick with with base 10 rather than base 12. Sorry. But didn't they have fantastic beards as well? Babylonian beards. Uh, yes. Really long ones. I'm sure they did. Really long curly beards. I think that the Babylonians knew what was up, man. I think they, they were, were they were where it was at. They were where it's at. I mean, I mean, there were I mean, I don't think it warrants postponing to another show. But on the original, there were some quite good threads. James Hanscom, who is 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 very funny and, and, and endear, intellectually very endearing. Nice Sorry. He's a very nice man. He's been to my school. He has James Hanscom. Has he? He has. I think. Yeah, but he he I were asked a question on Twitter about um to to Alex Weatherall, formerly of Teacher Tap, um about who's a mathematician, I believe, you know, about the big new there's some new kilo, mega, giga, terra, small milli, micro, nano, pico, femto sequence. There's some there's a runner and a and, and anyway, but, but I can't remember, you know, just they, they've extended that scale, you know, which goes up by a factor of a thousand each time. Um, and and but James Hanscom was explaining the size of numbers or, you know, OK, take a pig and an apple. It's a big pig. It weighs about 100 kilograms. It's a big apple. It weighs about one kilogram. We could weigh things in pigs and we could weigh things in apples. And there would be a number associated with this. Matt Hancock weighs 0 0.8 pigs. His brain is 0 0.1 apples. We don't care about the numbers today, and all that. So you just this wonderful long thread about about scale and and how we have um, you know factors of a thousand. And then I went off on one about the centimeter being utterly pointless because it's not you know it's not the millimeter is is a thousand times smaller than a meter, and kilometer is a thousand times larger. And it's much easier to work in factors of a thousand when you're dealing with with large, very large, and very small numbers and and so yeah. forth. That was interesting. Um, Ed, you. Edu, what's it called? Edu soup, um, shaking that chalk. Um, yeah. His favourite number, apparently. I've now lost my bookmarks. Um, uh, no, I haven't. Um, his favourite number is Graham's number, whatever that is. Too big to write down, even using scientific notation. Even if every digit in Graham's number were written in the tiniest writing possible, it would still be too big to fit in the observable universe. Really useful number, that one. Um, Adam Boxer, to mention him again, his favourite yeah. number is the Avogadro's number, which is the 6 times 10 to the power 20 which is the number of atoms found in a mole of anything so one mole of of um helium or one mole of of aluminium will contain um six times 10 to the power 23 atoms of that particular substance that is avogadro's number which is a very important number in chemistry that's a quite a cool number um but there you go that's about it for me on numbers um there we go there you go Happy days. I have thought. I have thought. If I'm ever, if I ever become a successful novelist, um, and right. a couple of novels published, and and have my name is out there, and then I write an autobiography that um anyone might want to read, other than it sitting on a shelf in my in my um study for 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 my grandchildren to read when they want to read it, if they ever do. Um, I think the title of that as the prime of life and only writing about years in your life when you were a prime number 
age old. Mm. Um, that's that's quite a novel idea. Well, it's not a novel idea. It's an autobiography idea. Ha <laughs> ha, put them trash. I wonder if that will coincide with interesting years. Let's just check. One, not that interesting. One's not prime. Two. Well, like, two. Two, three. Yes, not very interesting. You can't you don't write about lot. those with any great knowledge, but you could do your family bits then, couldn't you? You could do your heritage. Yeah, um, Three. Five. Not very interesting. No. Seven. Not very interesting. We're halfway through the book at this point, and it's still not very interesting. We're not halfway um, through the book. <laughs> Eleven. Not, not very interesting. Very interesting. It's, <laughs> you get Thirteen. The Thirteen. You could refer to a Harry Enfield sketch and then and then move on. Um, yeah. Seventeen. Quite interesting. Oh yeah. Well, seventeen is going to be the peak, really, isn't it? Nineteen. Less... No, nineteen's the peak. Nineteen's the peak, isn't it? Nineteen. Um, Twenty-three is a good prime number. Twenty-three's peak. Twenty-three's peak. I'm going there. Twenty-three. It's university. You're looking for a job. Can you find a job? Heaven knows you're miserable. But yeah. <laughs> Twenty-nine. 29, it's downhill from there. Um, down, down badly at that point. 31. 31. Um, Nothing about much the same as 29. Um, then what, what happens? When do we go to? Did we go to 37? Yeah. yeah. 37. No. no. We're, we're six minutes over and now we're just saying numbers at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop. Okay. Uh, do you want to play another song or do we going to go home now? I was going to do Seven Days by Craig David, but I've read it now and it's not very good. But let no, me I just don't, I don't... finish off the show. Let me read you this beautiful first verse and then we'll say pack it. Okay, so we're back in. I'm going to read it like it's a poem, as it deserves to be read. On my way to see my friends who lived a couple blocks away from me. Ow. As I walked through the subway, it must have been about quarter past three. In front of me stood a beautiful honey with a beautiful body. She asked me for the time. I said it would cost her her name. That's dark, isn't it? A six digit number and a date with me tomorrow at nine. Did she decline? No. Didn't she mind? I don't think so. Was it for real? Damn sure. What was the deal? Pretty girl, aged 24. Was she keen? She couldn't wait. Cinnamon Queen, let me update. What did she say? She said she'd love to rendezvous. She asked me what we were gonna do. Said we'd start with a bottle of Moe for two. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Lovely. It pulls you back, doesn't it? I said it would cost her her name. Man, what a dark deal that is. That's who, who, like really whose poem is that? That was Craig David's Seven Days, that was. Seven Days. Okay. Yeah, well, I did it. Seven. I was thinking songs of seven. I wasn't going to do Seven Tears by the Goombay Dance Band. I decided not to do that. I went for the, for the master himself, Craig David. Let me tell you, I've never read those words before. I'm going to make a point of never reading them again. It was a moment in time that I shared with and now we should pack it in. <laughs> right, everybody. Um, there's a bit been a bit of chat in the chat about numbers as well, hasn't there? What's it? What's Lucy? Remember featuring this in Ashes to Ashes and Keely Hawes drove a tank over the singer's car. I think Lucy and Paul have been having some sort of parallel anniversary. Seven is a song by Prince. Mrs. Pete. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for listening in. Thanks for turning up a little bit late, everyone. Um, and thanks, listeners, back. Like, um, it was a bit harsh. And it was nice to see Paul. He said it was the largest audience ever seen on a uh, on a Teachers Talk radio show. <laughs> <laughs> There's three um, of them at one point. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Just say numbers. Okay. 1,342. Good night, everybody. Night all bye. You've been listening to Teachers Talk Radio. Tune in live and listen back at ttradio.org. We look forward to hearing from you next time on Teachers Talk Radio. One thousand three hundred and fifty seven.